Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Akuya Daniela and you're watching Town of Tawia. If this is your first time watching, welcome. Recently got to go through my comment section and some of you guys are so kind. <laughs> Honestly, you've been really encouraging and I really appreciate it. It does not go unnoticed. And Khadija Bo magically <laughs> wandered down <laughs> and just blessed this channel. And this channel has grown immensely. Um, Khadija Bo, auntie, thank you so much. We are almost at 9,000 subscribers. I'm really looking forward to getting to know some of you guys and hopefully doing some collabs in the future as well. If you do videography and would be down to continue the Buy in Black series this summer with me and as a collab, I would love that. So reach out to me if you're another creative. Um, get at me on my Instagram and hopefully we can get collaborating. If you're in the London, Essex area, hopefully we can work together on something. So I'll be posting only one video a month just for the next two months or so, um, just because I have a lot of work outside of YouTube. So I'm going to focus on that for the next two months and just and put out one lengthy video a month and then discuss it with you guys in the comments. And then hopefully this summer I'll be able to do more videos fortnightly and I'm lo really looking forward to that. I have some really good videos I'm thinking of uploading. So without Without further ado let's get straight into the video so the reason i decided to discuss this issue is it came to my attention that a lot of people don't seem to know what the british the black british experience is like there's a lot of stereotypes of what it's like to be british um a lot of them are based on the royal family <laughs> with all the mega markle chaos that's going on i noticed how many people were surprised and kind of like in disbelief that there were any racial issues within the uk so i thought how can I approach this with the lens, through the lens of kind of film and theatre and that lens? And I thought, how about I discuss some of your faves on television and on the films that you watch and quite specifically how they ended up and why they ended up moving to the States. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing Black Brits in Hollywood. surrounding black Brits moving to the States to pursue a career in acting is nothing new. And to be quite frank, it has led to a lot, a lot of controversy. Uh, many African-American actors have been very vocal about their distaste of black Brits moving to the States and playing African-American roles. They discussed that they felt that African-American actors are the only people that would really be able to justly understand some of the racial issues discussed within those African-American characters. In 2017, Jordan Peele got conversation stirring after his premiere of Get Out, a social thriller that combined both comedy and horror to discuss racial issues in America. Do you find the being African American as more advantage or disadvantage in the modern world? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, man. It was in this very production that Daniel Kaluuya's portrayal of an African-American character was so enthralling that many Americans were surprised to hear that Kaluuya was even British. It makes me actually feel stupid when, because I saw you in Get Out, I was like, yeah, it never occurred to me you weren't American. Yeah. And that's, you know, a compliment to you and your Thank accent. You, and, and then here, it turns out you're not. No, no, I'm not, yeah. by the way. <laughs> I'm not American, no. Nonetheless, Daniel Kaluuya's British nationality did not sit well with some of the big names in Hollywood. And actors as renowned as uh, someone like Samuel L. Jackson has been critical of how casting directors have decided to cast black British actors in American films as opposed to black American actors. There are a lot of British, black British actors. I tend to wonder what would that movie have been with an American brother who really now, Get Out was not the first time a black British actor was cast to play an African-American role. Prior to Get Out, there was a British actor Chiwetel Ejiofor's performance in 12 Years a Slave. The 2013 production where the British actor played a free African-American man who was sold into slavery in 1841. And then in 2014, David Oyelowo played the honored Martin Luther King Jr. in the Hollywood production of Selma. 
In the latter years of the 2010s, we also had Londoner Damson Idris' portrayal of Franklin in the 2017 drama series Snowfall, shortly followed by Brum actor Daniel Ezra being casted as Spencer in the ironically named television series All American. And then there was the performance that reminded us that this debate was never settled when Cynthia Arrivo was cast to play Aretha Franklin in the 2019 biopic. This was not Arivo's first time playing a legendary African-American figure. And in the past, she had been criticized for her portrayal of Harriet Tubman and her featuring as Celie in the Color Purple musical on Broadway. However, this case was slightly different to the others as British actress Cynthia Arivo was particularly criticized for playing an African-American lead because of tweets that she had previously made that appeared to use the African-American language, AAVE, mockingly. Some African-American viewers were not against her playing these historic figures because of her nationality, but actually due to her disregard for the culture that these women were born into, which raised speculations that it was an intentional choice to choose non-American actors to play these African-American roles because the trauma was less specific. This raised awareness to the issue that comes with a lack of representation. This has led to African-American actors addressing that they felt that they were being substituted by the Brits. And this appeared to be another form of discrimination in the film industry that they would have to face. Now, if you're anything like me when I first caught a glimpse of this debate, you might be wondering why this is even worth discussing. I mean, if we're all black, can't we all relate to the experience of being marginalised by the Western world? And of course, many British actors shared this sentiment. You know, we are dissected as a people. Mm -hmm. uh, why dissect us even further by a comment as stupid as that? So the idea that he can dissect us into, well, English actors that are black are stealing roles from American actors is really ignorant. And it's, it's the stuff made of things that divide us, not stuff that pulls us together. Same. Well, we have, uh, you know, the whole Black Lives Matter movement in the UK. We have um, incredibly high profile cases that have happened. Um, there have been a lot of um, black deaths in police custody, but there has not been a single arrest of any police officer, despite all of those deaths. Yeah. Um, so we're grappling with the same issues and, you know, we are united in yeah. that, that respect, absolutely. After my research for this video, I started to realise that this discussion is more than a debate of oppression Olympics or who has it worse, but there are some really valid points on, on both sides of the argument. So I'm going to start with the strongest overarching argument against Black Brits playing African-American roles, which is that although we both have a shared experience of being marginalised by Western society, the Black experience is not a monolith. So it would be doing more injustice to the African-American community if the success of their stories was awarded to actors and performers outside of their own community. And even though black Brits may experience systemic racism, the African-American experience vastly differs from the British experience. And to group all of the actors in the same casting system would be a disservice to the stories within the African-American community. Based on this sentiment, the African-American actors who are against Black Brits playing African-American roles should therefore refrain from enabling their counterparts and themselves from playing any role that isn't American. However, to be frank, that is just a problematic way of approaching the casting system, as the importance of embracing skill and emotive acting is replaced with a nationality checklist. With that being said, based on the premise that the Black experience varies across the world, this causes a few raised eyebrows when African-American actors have been comfortable playing black characters from communities outside of their own, in particular communities who have had a similar history of oppression. For example, in the 2000s, Morgan Freeman played the revolutionary South African president, Nelson Mandela. And more specific to the topic at hand, in the 80s, Denzel Washington played a British character in For Queen and Country, 
and then the year later, he played a Jamaican character in Mighty Quinn. You have a license for that? <clears throat> in the following decade, Forrest Whitaker went on to play a British soldier in The Crying Game. I just sting me, Mr. Scorpion, for now we both will drown. And in the 2006 production of The Last King of Scotland, he played the former Ugandan president, Idi Amin. Then in the 2000s, American actor Don Cheadle put on his British accent for his role in Ocean's Eleven. Oh, leave it out. And in Black Panther, the American actor Chadwick Boseman played Marvel's most iconic African hero, T'Challa. And now, how can we forget Cool Runnings, where American actor Malik Yoba played a member of the Jamaican bobsled team. Sanka, you dead? Yeah, man. I hear you. I see power. I see a badass mother who won't take no crap off of nobody. Overall, representation does matter. And I think it's important to find a balance between casting characters based on who would be able to represent the intended characterization of a particular role and also allowing legendary and quintessential characters to be played by someone within their own community to support the local talent. This topic brings about conversations of Pan-Africanism and the shared experience, which leads to the next part of this video. According to the Cambridge Dictionary, Pan-Africanism is the belief that people from Africa and their descendants should be united, or a movement to achieve such unity. Now the concept of Pan-Africanism bears a lot of weight in this topic because conversations of this matter often turn into a game of oppression Olympics, which is just extremely unproductive. In order to develop this side of the argument, I am going to examine the production of one of the films that have been accused of wrongly using Black Brits to play African-American leads. In 2017, American screenwriter, actress and producer Lena Waithe wrote the smooth and arresting film Queen and Slim, which first premiered in 2019. The film is about a couple that shoot a cop in self-defence, but are labelled cop killers by the media and are wanted for their actions. The two lead roles in the film were played by British actors Daniel Kaluuya and the stunning Jodie Turner-Smith. The writer Lena Waithe, in an interview, gave an absorbing argument in her defense of casting these British actors to play African-American roles. Your thoughts on that whole uh, Honestly, I think it's divisive, you know, and I think it's it doesn't move the culture forward. Uh, and I always say this, you know, for anyone that has that argument or like, oh, let's get some American, whatever, As like, at the end of the day, if you're black and you get pulled over by a police officer, he's not going to not kill you because you have a British accent. <laughs> that is a fact. So we all in this together. We all get discriminated against. We all get treated like second class citizens in a country that our ancestors have built. Um, and to me, I'm a big proponent of black unity. I don't care where you come from. Well, that's pan-Africanism. Mm -hmm. really, you know, we stand stronger when we stand together. For me, yeah, it does come into consideration because I don't want to look disrespectful to a culture. I'm not really in the business of that. If I feel like I'm stepping over a line or just just won't entertain it, do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just not for me. And then if something comes my way and I'm given an opportunity, I interrogate why people want me to be a part of it, interrogate why I want to do it. And if those reasons align, I'll step in. And, and if people project attitudes towards it, I just got to hold it. <laughs> and you know, in doing Queen and Slim, for me, it's like I wanted to bring honour to this woman's story and who this woman was, and bring honour to the experience of being black in America. And while I might not be born here, I am a black person in America, and I've been in America for a very long time. So, you know, I felt like this was a conversation that I wasn't afraid to step in, but I was stepping into it with the utmost reverence you know what I mean, for the story. And I think there's a lot of people like to sort of play on this conversation about there's a tension between, and I don't think, I don't really believe that there is a tension, you know, I think there's love and respect on, on all sides. And I think that as a community, we should all be able to play all of each other in the diaspora, do you know what I mean? It's like we're having simultaneous experiences all over the world, do you know what I mean? That are so connected and so the same, it's like, you know, my family are Jamaican, do you know what I mean? It's like we were just the slaves that were dropped off over there. 
Do you know what I'm saying? And so, and I think, and at the end of the day, when you live and exist as a black person in America, at least to white society, to a certain extent, no one is asking where you were from, where you're from and where you're born, you know? When I walk into a room, my blackness announces itself before I open my mouth. So people are already judging me and who I am as a black American when I exist in spaces in black America. Do you know? And while I do recognize that there are definitely moments and there is an othering that happens for sure, you know, in society where they're like, oh, this kind of black, especially in America, this kind of black is better or more acceptable than another. But that is something that has been projected on us by non-black communities mm -hmm. it's not something that we're projecting onto each other do you know what i mean and so it's like i think it's really beautiful to be able to do a film like this and to bring honor to that community and and i look forward to seeing more black american actors playing roles where they play british as addressed in the prior videos there is often the assumption that black brits could not come close to understanding issues relating to oppressive systems which is so far from the truth now, in the UK, we have many privileges like free healthcare and the use of guns isn't normalised. However, the death of innocent people due to racial issues in the country is something that is familiar in the UK, as well as systemic racism, gang culture and drug abuse rooted from deep poverty and public housing. These are all things that are not foreign to the eyes of many Brits. In fact, many of the black British actors in Hollywood that we know and love found theatre as an escape from their difficult inner city environment. And for many of these actors, their experiences of struggle were a follow on from the systemic racism that their parents experienced when arriving in Britain in the mid 1900s. Of course, like any industry, not every black and British actor had to constantly struggle economically. Shueto Ejiofo came from an upper middle class Nigerian home and went to both Dulwich Prep and Dulwich College. And Naomi Harris, although she grew up in a working class home, attended Oxford University before fully pursuing her career in acting. These are often examples that are used to inform many people's perception of the, of the overall black British experience. However, this is just one side of the coin. Now let's take a look at some of the other stories so, of these black British actors and see what made them decide to move to the States to begin with. This conversation leads us to London. Here Femi Ogun started the Identity Drama School, the first all black drama school in the UK that offered the extracurricular drama lessons and booking opportunities that were not as easily accessible to a lot of London's young black talent. It was this programme that birthed many of the successful names in Hollywood. And through this, Ogun birthed one of the actors that changed the face of the film industry, John Boyega, who would soon become the first black lead in the Star Wars franchise. But before his Hollywood success, John Boyega's role in Attack the Block, an alien gory blockbuster gave a voice to the children disproportionately from minority backgrounds, growing up in an inner city council house, trying to make their way out sane and alive. This story resonated with so many youths in the UK and it shed light and gave a form of representation on British screens that we would only get once in a blue moon. The story of Moses in Attack the Block also resonated with John Boyega's experience of growing up in London. Now, for anyone interested in understanding more on the history of the African diaspora and wanting to gain insight into different forms of the Black British experience, here are a few films and texts to look into. Also, Staying Power by Peter Fryer is a text that repeatedly came up during my research for this video and it discusses the history of Britain. So feel free to use my affiliate link in the description bar below to get the text. So many British theatre performances are based on period pieces and it goes without saying that it takes a lot of blind casting um, to put a person of colour as the lead in some of these performances. 
and many actors who have moved to the States report all of the backlash that they would receive when playing lead roles in the UK and how they had to fight behind the scenes to justify why they could play the lead role regardless of their race. Hollywood, however, is the epicenter of film. People travel to the US to gain new opportunities that they didn't get previously in their country. It represents the frontier of the entertainment industry. And to be fair, once these black British actors are given a chance in the US, this sheds light on the talent that we have in the UK. And this forces British film and theatre decision makers to see a reason to invest in the homegrown talent from the people of colour in their own country, therefore ridding us of this issue. But until then, it is a historic moment to see so many black Brits with the reach to be able to put their creativity on the map. And in my opinion, this is something to be celebrated. Okay, so my final thoughts on this topic. When it comes to legendary African-American figures, I understand the frustration, I really do. And I think there should be, we should take into consideration that there is a community that this person comes from, there's a nuance to their struggle that not only that I don't think other people will be able to understand, but really, I think if you just think about it as reinvesting in that person's community, just to support local talent in general, I don't think the criticism as such should be on the fact that the Black British people don't wouldn't understand or wouldn't know able to perform. I think maybe just focus on support supporting local talent for particular roles then with that argument I do understand but I think in terms of black Brits playing African-American roles I think that is not an issue you know African-Americans have been playing other people from other cultures you know African presidents with long you know from countries with very complex histories continuously just throughout throughout the years plenty of African-American actors have played British roles as we saw earlier so I think to criticize the black Brits it does sound like you know just being unnecessarily harsh some people brought up the concept of what was it accent privilege uh in terms of that I understand as well I can see how that can be frustrating where some of the you know Hollywood execs and directors assume that the black Brits are more on their game or more skilled really because of our accent or because our form of education in the UK and I can see how that can come across as unfair and also how it can come across as quite disrespectful to all of the skilled and highly trained Amer African-American actors so I definitely understand the frustration from that side of the argument I do feel like after a while it did become a little bit petty with the back and forth of the actors I think I think most of those actors who were sort of criticizing this that most of the actors that kind of picked, chipped in into this topic were pan-africanists you know based on their views on other things were actually pan-africanists so i was surprised to hear some of the discussions that was going on but i really think it was just that a lot of people just took offense to hearing if one side heard they weren't welcome the other side heard they weren't skilled enough and it just turned into a cat fight i think that's what it kind of turned into but some really valid serious points were made as well i just don't think the hostility should be targeted towards the actors as individuals but really towards the production team that create this scarcity of roles which is why we're so competitive hopefully that's going to be changing soon now that these conversations are being had um but let me know what you think this is a this is a lengthy one this is probably the longest video i've done on my channel but it was quite interesting um researching into this but anyways let me know what you think thank you for watching and i'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts in the comment section below.